welcome to this week's Dirt Shed show with me, Martin Ashton, and... Myself, Rich Payne. Rich, how are you doing? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Uh, I'm very good. Uh, I'm very excited to see some great weather here in the UK. I know. Um, it's been sweltering, hasn't it? Scorchio, you'd even say. Yeah, yeah. Our country, obviously, famous for raining, mainly, is yeah. what everyone um, <laughs> out of the UK seems to say. But at the moment, we are going through a heat wave, and it is bonkers yeah. uh, but it's enjoyable at the same time I'm not, <laughs> not going to lie it's quite nice um, now this week we have got something interesting to talk about um, mm. and it's a little bit about um, the whole lockdown scenario and how things are starting to open up and people are starting to go on holiday but yep. travelling to different countries is difficult so lots of people are thinking about staycation holidays um, and that got me thinking about bike packing. And then I heard you're about to embark on your first bike packing experiment. Uh, an experiment? Extravaganza. That's probably a better word. <laughs> <laughs> I am, yes. A uh, couple of weeks' time, myself and Blake are doing the coast to coast. So from uh, up north, east to west, which should be really fun. About 130 nice. odd miles. So how long will you actually be bike packing in this will you be tenting it you know what i mean will there be a tent involved there will be a tent involved there'll be we're going to carry everything with us on our bikes and basically we set off i think it's about uh, 65 miles a day it's only one night so it's not like a you know a full-on exploration trip. but uh it's enough 65 miles and then 65 miles the following day with a tent in between but it sounds amazing. It's basically just your bike and you, and you're going yeah. on holiday. You're self-contained. And when I say experiment, I guess I'm pointing out that, that, that am I right in thinking this will be your first? And you're a very experienced mountain bike rider. Yeah. But this is your first uh, foray into bike packing. Into bike packing. Yeah. So like, obviously, we, as we know, tons of racing done in my time, but never any sort of exploration, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Now. So that's really cool. And I thought, well, this is great because everyone watching might be thinking, hey, maybe I could go bikepacking, this whole new way to mountain bike. But I started looking into it, Rich. And I tell you what, right, it isn't new. <laughs> it's it been isn't around new. a while, I think, isn't it? It isn't new in any way. Well, in sort of modern terms, bike touring, which <gasps> is essentially what bikepacking is, has, has been around for decades. Yeah. People have been bike touring around Europe and around the States forever, right? But it goes back even further than that, right? In the late 1800s, the 25th Infantry in uh, America, who were called the Buffalo Soldiers, right? They did a test ride 2,000 miles across the states. Um, they started up in Montana, and I think they ended up in Iowa, or maybe even lower than that. But they went, went traversed across a lot of states on these bikes, trying to see if... Um, if the bike could compete with the horse as a mode oh. of transport across long distances. Interesting. So as, an, as an army vehicle. And if you look at their bikes, they are identical <laughs> to the setup of modern bike packing. It's been around literally for hundreds of Blur years. Man, eh? So it's not new, but is it cool and is it fresh and i think it is so should we be doing it so in a in a in a way of helping you uh Get all the knowledge you need before you bike packing. I, I I reached out. Okay. okay, I reached out. Um, and this this Rich is the expert opinion. Check it out. Hey guys, it's Erica here from Kentucky. Just wanted to drop in and let you know why I think everybody should try bike packing. So for me, I've been a mountain biker for about 20 years, but just discovered bike packing a little less than two years ago. And after doing some here in the States, took some friends and went overseas and did a little more in England and Wales. And I'm totally hooked. And I think all mountain bikers should give it a try. Okay, reason number one, all mountain bikers never want their rides to end. We want to spend every waking minute in the saddle on the trail. And bikepacking is one way to do that. Wake up in the morning, pack up camp, and spend the rest of the day on your bike. Hi, my name is Leo Wilcox and I'm from Alaska. First one is to pack light, bring as little as possible. It'll make the bike ride just like a regular bike uh, and just be a lot more fun. So two strategies for that are to bring just one set of clothing and to have a really lightweight sleep kit. That'll reduce bulk and also weight on the bike. Reason number two that you definitely need to try bike packing is because you get to buy all kinds of new gear camping equipment, all these cool bags that you get to put all over your bikes. And in fact, 
you probably are gonna need another bike. Okay, that last part isn't actually true at all. The bike you have will probably be just fine, but your spouse doesn't need to know that. Yes, bike packing. why should you do it? Well, for me, I kind of slow down, you know? Because I'm always charging through the woods. Going fast, jumping, stunting, skidding, schwalping, rat rat. Not stopping and taking a break and looking around. And bike packing, you get to travel. You can get to travel like this, fully loaded up, or you can just take a backpack and a, a bivy bag and just go and spend one night somewhere. The best thing about it is you're exploring new land and you can slow down a bit. Research your route before you head out. So that's making a route. Uh, Komoot is a great resource for that. Very important, you don't wanna get lost. So make sure that you know how to use your bike computer or the apps or read a map and think about using maybe Garmin or Strava to send a live track to your friends and family. It's a great safety feature and it helps them feel involved in your trip. Bring a rain jacket. This is a great layer and good if the weather's changing. It's a great vacation option. Camping is so much cheaper than hotels and resorts, sleeping under the stars with your friends, and those are the experiences you'll always remember. Having wider tires uh, for a gravel bike or a hardtail mountain bike with a wider tire, you can ride on more different terrain. Um, so this is a great way to kind of mix up your rides and and to feel comfortable on the bike. Make sure that if you aren't already, you get comfortable with any possible trail side repairs that you might need to do and think about which tools and spares you'll wanna bring along. Learn about the place where you're going, what kind of weather and wildlife might they have. Now the things you gotta consider is a fluid. Don't forget to take water, because man, on a day like this, without water, you're not gonna get very far and you're gonna put yourself in danger. And also, I'm still learning. I've done a few bike trips, but I'm still learning. I'm still thinking I take too much, and I do, I take too much. But you learn these things. Make sure that you take the time to stop, take photographs, chat with the locals, learn about the area, and just laugh it off if things don't go exactly to plan, because those are the stories that you're gonna tell for the rest of your life. Anyway, give it a try, you won't regret it. Thanks for having me, guys. See you later. Hopefully that's helped you out, Richard. Back to you in the shed. Wow, that is some blooming uh, good tips there. I tell you what I'm worried about though on my bike packing trip. I have a few things actually, Mark. One, how am I going to get a good night's kip? It's been a while since I've been in a tent. Andy's Pacifico, but that was glamping. Yeah. Uh, is my bike going to make it through? Because it's pretty grueling oh. on the bike carrying all that extra stuff. Yeah, but that's always a worry. That's true. Yeah, and eating. I like to eat a lot, mate. So, you know, am I going to get to eat a lot? Am I going to eat some good yeah. food? Yeah, you're going to have to carry the right food with you, obviously, on the way. So, But you know what? Well, you've got Blake with you. He's an experienced old hand at this bike packing now. That so, is true. You know, you're going to be fine. And obviously, you can look out for that video coming up on GMBN soon. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, dude? Should we go to some news? I think let's do the news. In the news this week, we have a real mixed bag. Later on, we'll talk about the racing. But to begin with, I want to talk about the community aspect of mountain biking and something called the Grow Cycling Foundation, which is a new foundation started by Elliot Jackson and Katie Holden to basically promote more grassroots participation and inclusivity in mountain biking. So in their own words, they serve to promote education, access and opportunities that advance diversity and inclusion in cycling. And that definitely sounds like a good thing to me. So if you hop onto their website, you can actually choose the square footage of your choice to donate. And that's gonna help build things like pump tracks, which are great grassroot level, you know, inclusion. It's gonna help a lot more people find out just how good mountain biking is. So I think that sounds pretty good to me indeed. You can follow them on any of your social media, Instagram, they've got loads of stuff going on, as well, of course, as their website, which we'll include in the description below. Now on to the racing. So we had the French Cup, which is a downhill race, very exciting and actually had quite a stacked international field, but that wasn't to spoil the French rider's day. So Benoit Coulange took out top spot with Hugo Frix Delon coming in second and third went to Loris Vergier. In the women's, Miriam Nicole took the win with Camille Balanche in second and Melanie Chapaz in third. So even on their day, the French riders are protecting their 
you know, home soil bragging rights. So we also saw the Crankworx summer races draw to a conclusion after three weeks of racing and over 12 events that covered a huge span of disciplines. We have Finals taking out the overall win with Bass van Steenbergen in second and Rhys Werner rounding out the men's podium. In the women's, Vea Verbeek took the win with Casey Brown and Andriana Lathina Nadeau taking third, which I think is super, super cool. You got downhill racers mixing up with the slope style and enduro riders in, you know, no necessarily <laughs> predictable order. Now, as always, guys, we've got some really cool stuff going on at the GMBN shop, so please do check it out. Some of those new adventure tees look absolutely smashing. This week, we have an amazing competition for you. Danies have put up some incredible protection that you guys and girls can get your hands on. All you've got to do is go down to the description at the bottom of this video and follow the link in it. But wait, what is it I can win, I hear you say? Well, they've put up three, yes, three incredible bundles, all made up of some of their great new gear. What's the bundles, I hear you say, though? Well, let's take a quick look. We have bundle number one is, well, let's start with this amazing-looking Rival Pro vest, Rival Pro padded shorts. You've got the Trail King, Pro and the Trail King Pro knee and elbow pads, all of which are sort of ergonomically designed, breathable material, uh, easy to move in, really, really lots of thoughts gone into them. Bundle number two, well, if you're feeling uh, that you don't need to go full overkill, well, you've got just the Trail King Pro knee and elbow pads. And the third bundle is just the Rival Pro short and vest. So something to cover you in all eventualities there. Now, like I said, these are some pretty wicked prizes that the guys at Danies have put up. Things like the Trailskins Pro elbow and knee pad here, well, they've been cut and contoured to try and fit your body as best as possible while still offering the most protection. Uh, same can be said for the Rival Pro shorts. And like I said, the nifty feature of having the bladder built into the back of the vest, but still like plenty of chest protection is really good for those big days out if you're sending that wild terrain. And you're never gonna get thirsty, great stuff. So like I said, if you want to be in a chance to win any of this incredible stuff, just head down to the description, follow the link, and you could be wearing some of this real nice new kit. So good. Uh, so good. Yeah, blows my mind every time. Yeah, there's some good riders out there, right? There's some pretty special riding, both good and bad in that lot, weren't there? <laughs> there was. <laughs> um, right, it's time for Hacks and Bodges, Rich. Hacks and Bodges. Hacks and Bodges. Yeah, oh, mate. Hacks and Bodges. You're, you're such a good sport. <sighs> you're such a good sport. I like to get involved. Why can't I get Neil to do that? Uh, so you, frustrating. You'll never get Neil involved. No, not in the singing. We won't. We won't. I pick on him about it, really. I shouldn't. I shouldn't go on about it. Oh, maybe that's it. Um, 
Uh, we'll get him one day. Right, we've got Hacks and Bodges here and we are looking for a winner of a GMBN race top. Um, and we're starting out, I think you're going to like this one, Rich. Look at this. Uh, from Barry in Ardemine in uh, Wexford, Ireland. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's a... It's a through axle bike holder, but he's made. It's just made out of two pieces of three by two, one piece of nine millimeter ply, and a twenty millimeter plastic conduit um, section. Yeah. And he's made this amazing. Well, I tell you what I like about it. It's just so neat. It's just so neat and tidy. The it works. Yeah. It's simple. I think it's great. Can I tell you I what really, I really I, like actually? The oh, attention to detail here. Say. If you look down the front of it, there's an Allen key yeah. holder for the right size Allen key you need to put your axle through it. Yeah, I really that's like a, that too. That's it's just clever. so good. It's good thinking, so Barry. good. Um, and I guess this would work as a wall mount. It would work as oh, if yeah. you've mounted it on a big platform in your van. Yeah, good shout. Um, it would work in the in the bike uh, in your bike cave itself, yeah. just on the floor, like Barry's using it. Multi use. It's great, man. I love that. It's just simple. Yeah. And I think I think even I could make that. And I'm not a great carpenter, it has to be said. I'm saying nothing. But I think I could do that, I reckon. That's a strong start um, from so Barry. Very good start from Barry. You're in with a shout, dude. Right, next up. Oh, this is good. This is from wow. Con. Um, he usually rides a Norco Optic, but he's now riding it not alone because... He has got an amazing little setup for his dog yeah. to sit on the crossbar of his bike. Um, so this is like the kids' shotgun. go ride thing, shotgun yeah. ride, um, and it. He's just made it out. Of That's just two bits of wood as well, isn't it? He's, he's painted it up so well and used foam and stuff. Yeah, there's like some clever engineering there, isn't there? So it all matches up. Yeah, it's very nice. I feel like that's the sort of thing I think I could make. But I'd actually end up not being able to do it. Yeah, I mean that. I, I don't have children. He's but made it, Should I make something like that? I'd fear for their life. Yeah, I, I, he's made it look easily. Macon's done a great job. He's over in Namibia in Africa, nice. um, and he has done a fantastic job there. That's pretty pro. I reckon there's some um, there's some pro skills being used there. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's good. Yeah, uh, it's very good. See, top top standard. Yeah. This week. Um, and then lastly, oh, oh my good wow. God. Wow. <laughs> have, have we got a Carpenter special going on this week or something? It is. It's the Hacks and Bodges Carpenter special. Chippies only oh may apply goodness. for this week or something. Blur, man. Look at um, that. Amazing. Um, so it's, it says there, you know, it's like space age woodwork for a, a van build. Ooh. I bought a van, needed a clever way to secure my bikes. Well, you come up with one, Rocco. Yeah. Um, it's really nice. Um, and I guess those two rollers, they kind of slide up to just sort of pinch the wheels in place yeah just sort of lock it in if you like by the looks of it crikey uh, oh man that's cool i want that i want that that's actually something i think i would if i saw that on sale i'd be like that's nice that's this nice. i could go with that this is this is a tough week mark how do you pick between i i guess because of the level of the second two i don't know if I don't know if we can give it to Barry at the start mm. there, as simple as his solution was. But I think it's got to be between Macon and Rocco. Uh, shall I tell you who I'm swaying towards? I'm going to go with who you say, because I can't do it. Oh, don't put that pressure on me. I've done that. Oh, you have done it. <laughs> uh, Rocco, congratulations, mate. You Rocco. have won it. Yes, nice. nice. That was that is a that is a week to win. I tell you yeah. what, Rocco, because those other two would have won on other weeks. For yeah, sure. I mean, that was they're no spoons, good. zip tighter, brake levers, but they are pretty <laughs> clever. Yeah, uh, I don't think we'll ever forget that spoon. <laughs> oh, um, that is a great standard of hacks and bodges. Mm. And if you are out there and you're thinking oh, I can do better than that, they're not so good. Then please, please yes. send them in to our GMB and uploader. We want to see what you're making, uh, what solutions you're coming up with for your problems um, in your bike cave or out on the trail, whatever it may be. Nothing is too simple and nothing is too easy to make look good no. as well, which I think has been proved this week. We really will Make show sure anything. Send them in. 
<laughs> we will. Um, fantastic job. Yeah. Right. Let's. Um. I tell you what, Rich. I've been uh, doing a little bit of training in the last few days. Yeah. Uh, getting out on my bike, uh, and I thought I'd delve into trying to get a bit of corner speed Ooh. on my bowhead. So, are you up for a bit of a Martin's mission update? Mate, it's been a while since I've seen a Martin's mission, and what with the good weather lately, I'm keen for this one. Mate, check this out. Welcome to Martin's Mission uh, number three, is it? Um, today I'm practicing some flat, fast turns. So out on this trail, can you see this turn here that I'm on? It's a really glorious trail. Just found it above where I'm usually riding over there in them trees. Um, big, long, swooping fire road. There's about seven or eight turns all the way down this trail, but it's high, high speed. So I'm going to practice some of this stuff that you see the EWS stars doing so often where they're just flat out around these corners. But they're not bike park corners, they're not burned. They're just holding the line. So I'm going to see if I can do a bit of that. Brought the old full face helmet out for this one because I'm a little bit nervy. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So let's see if I can get a little bit quicker. Let's have a few runs at it. really hard to hold the line. I'm coming in as quick as I dare, but because I can't use the power and I'm a bit scared of braking because it's going to sort of change my angle, I'm actually really struggling. I think what I'm going to do is do a run all the way down the trail and see if I get a bit more comfortable with it. Maybe I just need to link some turns together. Okay, I'm going to take some runs down this uh, long trail, string some of the corners together. This first corner, I'm really confident with because I can back it into it with the back brake. Um, as a trials rider, I'm always happy to get on the brakes if I can. Um, but this is about getting off the brakes, I guess. So um, after that, it's all fast corners, about seven or eight of them. So I've just got to hold it flat out and keep going into the corners fast. Think Sam Hill. I've got to, uh, yeah, I've got to become Sam Hill. Right, let's give it a go. the corner I struggled with there came in I thought I was coming in at a good speed from that angle there came through but it's all out off camber and I just oh, couldn't hold it and I went wide there's a big old ravine just there so it's good job I didn't go off not ravine stream you know gully uh, so I'm gonna have a few more runs of that I guess I do need to brake check as I come into this one um, and I guess it's all important the, the line on the way in, if you get that wrong, it's very hard to fix it once you've got it wrong. I think I had the line right, but there's sort of something of a natural berm on the outside. So maybe this one, instead of coming in tight and trying to like clip an apex, I'm going to run this one wide and see if I can uh, have a bit of a play with the loose stuff on the outside. Let's give that a go. <laughs> That went better. I guess it's all about line choice, isn't it? You've got to get the line choice right. That means looking at the track. And EWS stars, they do do a bit of practice. So I need to make sure I'm thinking about my lines. It's not all about feel and touch. You've got to be in the corner on the right line and then that's where the touch comes in. I guess that's where the difference is. I don't necessarily want to find the high speed rate that those top boys are going like I don't want to be Martin Mays but I want to get down the course 
in some kind of uh, fashion that I'm proud of. But I think I got a bit quicker today. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> Okay, time for caption contest. Now, Rich, you were the star of this last week. Did you see this picture? <laughs> How did I miss oh, this? Man. Oh, I don't know, dude. They caught you there, though. You've been caught out. So we got some good captions for it, though, so that's what we were after. <laughs> um, and the best caption is going to be winning a GMBN flask, which is a highly sought-after prize. Mm. So um, let's start off with a certified car nut who says, when you're chilling after a run and you hear the case from the other end of the trail, that is <laughs> actually what that... That happens as well, don't uh, you? You hear that? There's only a, there's one sound a case makes, and it's... Oh, Horrifying. Nice. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, what else we got? Uh, okay. Uh, Tim Garland, uh, caption contest here is, when you find out that you're double dipping chamois cream using... Oh. Ro <laughs> Let me start again. <laughs> when, you, when you find out that you're double dipping chamois cream using roadie friend just borrowed your salsa and he didn't use a spoon. Gross. Oh, man. Oh. Okay, I've got it. So either you're spooning in chamois cream... <laughs> Or he's been rubbing your salad on his, well... Chamois. Yeah, it's not nice. <laughs> no. Not nice. Yeah, where do you rub it? On the chamois or where do you rub chamois cream? Do you rub it on the chamois or do you rub it on where it's the a, chamois... It's a personal preference. I go straight to skin, let's say. <laughs> Get it done. Yuck. Next, <laughs> next caption. <laughs> Jason Vanderwolf says, Blake, I told you not to keep your cheese grips in my lunchbox. <laughs> oh, God. Rich, that was actually something that happened before your time. Do, do you know about cheese grips? Uh, I've heard the rumours and the stories. It's more, it's more of a thing of legend now, isn't it? Well, I came up with this great product idea that, you know, when you're out on a ride, it would work for bikepacking, in fact, oh. is that it, why, when you're going to carry food with you, why don't you have grips made of cheese, and then when you're hungry, you can just bite into them. Um, Blake tried to make one. Um, actually, we both did, because I did a vegan version. Um, <laughs> but then Blake forgot about them, and the cheese that had actually gone in the end of his handlebars oh. started to, um, what should I say, ferment. That's <laughs> um, gross. And... It, and he only discovered it about four months later on a trip to the States in his bike bag. They must have been stinking. Not nice, um, but you definitely wouldn't want it to a lunchbox. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, mate, pick a winner from that bunch. I can't do it. Right. I like them all, all very good ones. The middle one, the chamois cream one's slightly disturbing, and I don't want to think about that in my lunchbox. That's gross. No. S cheese grips, well... I think we're going to go with cheese grips. I actually oh, yeah. I even like the idea of trying cheese grips. I think we might have to do a cheese grips too. Um, well, that could uh, go handy with my next product I'm bringing out, meat pedals. <laughs> yeah. Tenderised. Yeah, steak yeah. pedals. But They're going to work very well. Jason Vanderwolf, Van Wolf, I hope I've said that correctly. Congratulations, you've won yourself a flask. You are a winner, congratulations. Right, here's this week's photo to get your caption teeth into. Um, <laughs> work with that monstrosity uh, and let us know in the comment section down below your caption contest entry and you could be a winner next week. Right, on with the show. Right then, Mark, on the channel this week, we have got some absolute belters for you. We have got uh, top 10 things not to do on a bike. Now, this is one of yours, right? This is one of mine. Yeah, it's just uh, some little things that you shouldn't do out there on the trails. There are many things you should, but here's a few that you shouldn't do. <laughs> um, yeah, Saturday, we've got more rich on Saturday, actually, <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah, on uh, Saturday, I've got a really interesting video I did, actually, which was all about how much faster can you get in two weeks. So. Uh, Finding a section of trail at the beginning of the, the, the experiment, put a time in, and then using like Garmin data and looking at the track and setting up your bike and things like that, how much faster can you get by the end of that two week period? Oh, and did you get any faster? Right, you're gonna have to watch and find out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, Sunday, we've got Blake's Dorset bike packing trip, which he's doing as we speak, he actually. Is, yeah. So by the end of that, fortunately, he will be a bike packing expert and he'll be able to teach you how to go bike packing 
in a week or so. Perfect, right? <laughs> well timed, isn't it? Perfect. Yes. Um, we've also got a Sam Hill bio come in. We've yep. got a review on EWS and how to ride scary terrain all in this fabulous week on GMBN. So make sure you don't miss out. Um, right, Rich, are you ready? I think we've just got time to do a few bikes in the bike vault. You up for that? Martin, I was born ready. Let's do it. Right, okay. In the bike vault this week, we have got... Oh, look at oh, this wow. to start. Lovely bike here. Cool. Daniel's Transition Patrol. Mm, tidy. That's a good start. I like all the Kashima coating everywhere. Yeah, That's yeah. very nice. Um, it's got 2021 SRAM... Um, what so what, how do i say that one by um drivetrain yeah, it's the got XO1. a chris king headset yeah so is the xo1 a version of or is that saying one by no that's a version of so that's you've got the, xx1 xo1 of, uh, of course, yeah. and whatever yeah, yeah yeah of course um it's a and, and how is that set how is that group set i've not actually it's good I've not uh, had... on my poly i have the eagle xx1 eagle and it is yeah. Yeah, pretty fancy. And it looks What's the difference between Eagle and and say this drivetrain? Ask Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Audio <Daniel> Henry. <laughs> I like oh, to both... use them. They know the tech stats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I tell you what I like about Eagle is it's just all that gold. It looks <sighs> I know. super, super cool. Um, never works for my setup though, but there we are. So uh, I'm a bit out of it when it comes to derailers and you don't have a one by, you don't have a twelve speed setup? Oh uh, yeah, on my bike it's just one speed. Fast. One, one speed. <laughs> well, well, yeah, no, it definitely isn't fast, <laughs> but it is just like, yeah, no gears, just go. That's cool. it. That's all it does. Um, there's also some Hope Hubs on this build. Hey. Um, it's definitely nice. Fox 38s, it's, well, oh, it's definitely a super nice. 38s. Feature. You've got to ring the bell. Hang on. Yeah, you've got to ring that bell. There she goes, she's wrong. Nice, nice. Right, what have we got next then, Mark? Next up, we have got Jan's oh. Vita Sentier. This is in Gorgograt. Gorgograt. Yeah, I was there last year. Gorgograt in Zermatt. Yep. Where um where the EWS boys are going to be soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that is a fabulous looking location. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Oh, jealous. He should have I'm taken a picture with go. like with less of a stunning background. I'm afraid because that is <laughs> yeah, it's distracting. But that is bike. a really nice. That's you know that's a nice bike. Yeah, what do you think of a Vitus? I've not read Vitus, Vitus. No, dude, Which we did this last time. Tomato, tomato. Oh, we could be here all day. It's nice. I'm a Vitus guy, but that is nice. <laughs> it's nice. Next up, we've got Jerry, and it's ah. a Paul Tom Tomu. Tomu, yes. Um, cool, that's a bit of a dirt jump weapon there. That is. Look nice. at those pikes on the front. <laughs> yes. Look at those pikes. Um, <laughs> let's say how long those grips and pedals stay white, says Jerry. Yeah, that's a good point, mm. man. They are not going to last. No. Um, the pedals might. The grips aren't going to. Not if you're gonna, not if you're planning on using it. Yeah. Uh, that's nice. That's nice. That's a nice bike. Nice bike. Definitely a nice. Yep. Um, next up, oh, look at this little piece. Wow. Uh, it's at Jonathan's Cannondale Suju. It's a 20 inch mountain okay. bike, little fat tires. Um, this is in Ireland and I love it. I mean, it's a Cannondale, so the obligatory super nice will be hit right now. <laughs> I thank you. You're welcome. I thank you. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is a, a great little bike for a five year old. Yeah. It's perfect in every way and it's got the big C all down the down tube. <laughs> love it. I feel you're biased, but uh, let's carry on. Biased? Me? Never. No. Um, <laughs> next up, Bob's. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's a Santa Cruz. Retro. That is well cool. Why do I like that so much? That's, and What's that, good about I it? like. Is it, have you noticed? Look at the picture. He's like blurred out the background, focused on the bike. Is that a three by on the front or two by? I can't quite tell. I think it's three. Oof. All the gears That's, going on. Bar ends. I mean, I don't know. I think, you know, I think I like it. I'm looking at it and I'm a bit confused. I'm like, why do I like this? Because there's an awful lot about it I shouldn't like. But <laughs> for the for the bikes, I would be interested in. Um, and I, it sort of harps back to a sort of older school cross country yeah. race racing beast, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it's got a classic look about it. And it's some very got... low profile slick tyres going on there as well, by the looks of it. 
It's it's even got some kind of cow horn handlebar on it. I believe <laughs> they call them bar end. They're weird, but they look like they work. Um, I'm not going to be horrible with bar ends because I got told off last time I was. <laughs> so I think this is... I'm, I'm going against everything that's in me. It's super nice. That's what I'm saying. I no, do you know what? I agree. That's that's some retro cool bike there. I I remember cool. looking at those thinking that's back in the day thinking that I would like one of them. That is very cool. Ah, nice. And to end up the bike Whoa. hole this week, oh, wow. we have got Declan Surley. Now there's the bike packing future of Rich Payne right there. Look at that. It's my bike. It's gonna look future. like that. That's your future, Rich. What do you think? I mean, look, he's got... I mean, there's so much on that bike. It's crazy. I don't know where to look. That's the problem, Mark. Where do I start? Well, I mean, he's out riding it in the Grampians in uh, Australia, um, in Victoria, in Australia. Uh, this is the usual trail, slaying it. Um, wow. I mean, he's got, I don't know, everything on there. There's, there's, the, any, everything, there's nearly a kitchen sink on there. So... I Dude, mean, you can't even set. see through the frame. There's so much strapped to it. <laughs> That's your new bike. It's That's not... what you're going to be riding. It's rigid. <laughs> oh, my God. It is, it is rigid, too. Oh, my God. It is super nice. Oh, hang on. Okay. Damn. Wow, Super nice. Love it. Well, there you go. That's the end of the show, and it ends on a bike packing theme just where it started. <laughs> Fantastic. Rich, I wish, I wish you all the best with your Thank bike packing. Thank you very much, trip. mate. I, I, I hope it goes really well. Me too. Um, um, maybe uh, you'll be a convert and you'll be going all rigid and loony later on yourself. Who knows? You, you know, watch this space. <laughs> uh, we will do. Right, and other than that, we will see you on next week's Dirt Shed show. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe to GMBN. Um, I guess some likes and some shares would be good, wouldn't it, Rich? I, like I wouldn't say no. Go on, give, just no. give us a little like and a share. Go on, and until then, we will see you next week on The Dirt Shed Show. Laters.